Hi there, I'm KM, an Associate Professor in the School of Life Sciences, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Welcome back to the second video on air pollution and health. This video focuses on air pollution health index and what we are doing to reduce the health impacts on us from air pollution. Last video, we reviewed the major components, sources, and impacts of air pollution in Hong Kong. While we realize the major air pollution affecting our visibility is from transboundary air pollution, our own production of air pollution on the streets are affecting our health directly. The roadside air pollution, of course, is contributed by our own vehicles. We have already got 40% more vehicle traveled. The number of total vehicles is close to double from 1991. This diagram looked at the numbers of days with air pollution index API higher or exceeding 100 from 2007 to 2013, and they are mainly recorded in the roadside stations. Only 20 days coming from the rooftop stations and in 2011, over 160 days are from the roadside stations. This table shows the AQI data from roadside and the general stations, mainly contributed by FSP, fine suspended particulates, and sulfur dioxide. This table lists the API based on WHO standard with a more stringent air quality guidelines and almost every day the api levels of sulfur dioxide and fsp exceeded the who levels in other words our air quality standards expired and are far lower than who standards in fact roadside air pollution is our major health threat we certainly do not want to put on our mask and Goku to walk on the street, right? Professor Hadley, a retired professor from the University of Hong Kong, developed the Hadley Index of Economic Laws from Air Pollution and posted it in his website. In fact, air pollutants are causing chronic health problems, worsening asthma cases, causing bronchitis, and cardiovascular diseases, air pollution in general, could cause discomfort and eye irritation. Many air pollutants are proven carcinogen, causing lung cancer. The Hong Kong SAR government since 2014 introduced the Air Pollution Health Index. This is a scale from 1 to 10, showing the health risk of air pollution online and, pay, and post in the EPD website made long to general public. One means uh, 10 means serious, 8 to 10 mean high health risk. Outdoor activities are not advised. 6, 7 is high and 6 or below are moderate or low risk of health from air pollution levels measured. However, the Air Pollution Health Index is a combined index of all pollutants. The original API highlights the most serious type of pollution. In this example of the data of 2017, January 19, AQI of Dongchong was 155 contributed from PM2.5, but health index was 3, low risk. Most other stations on that particular day also exceeded 100. For nine stations out of 15, all stations had AQHI as four. How could AQHI really help? Before establishing the health index for Hong Kong, we had a huge debate over the outdated air pollution quality's objectives. 
existing or the AQOs suggested then were highlighted in yellow. They are in between the WHO standards and the old standard recommended some 30 to 40 years ago. For example, looking at the ozone level, WHO guidelines are just 100 microgram per cubic meter. It was 240 and now adjusted to 160. Not as recommended by the green groups, it is better than the old days. We hope the government will revise the guidelines standard in 2020 and develop a more stringent level to better protect our health. Professor Wong from the Community Medicine of CUHK wrote the Health in Stack study and proposal. From his data and many of his research in the last 30 years, emergency hospital admissions are relating cardiovascular and respiratory problems in all age groups with various air pollutants of PM10, PM2.5, NOx, ozone, and sulfur dioxide. The NO2 and SO2 levels mostly fit the WHO recommendations, despite the particular matters and ozone for short. They are, however, more stringent than before. One of the reasons why we do not follow the WHO guidelines is that we are not prepared yet to upgrade our vehicles. We need a more aggressive policy on improving our air quality. Perhaps electric cars can help, but that's not good enough. This slide shows the large diesel vehicles over 3.5 tons, the emission reduction from P Euro baseline in, 20, uh, in 1992 to 2012, the Euro 5 vehicle. Hydrocarbon, nitrogen oxides, and particulate matters are much reduced. The government has planned to retire most diesel vehicles to new Euro 3 by 2019, not yet to Euro 5 as we all wished. As transboundary pollution is also a serious problem and concern, the Hong Kong SAR government and Guangdong province, in fact, have worked together a Pearl River Delta, PRD, emission reduction plan, with a success in reducing the 2005 levels of SO2 sulfur dioxide, NOx, nitrogen oxides. RSP and VOC on both sides of Hong Kong and the PLD economic zone. You can note the huge amount of emissions from PLD economic zone comparing with Hong Kong. There is still much room to improve our air quality in the region as we share the same sky. Our last three slides here at the end of this video, we go over the key points relating to indoor air quality. And we'd like to remind you that indoor air pollution also plays a very significant role in hurting our health. This list of 10 parameters from airflow, bacteria, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, formaldehyde, nitrogen oxides, ozone, radon, humidity, RSP and total VOC are our major concerns. There are guidelines of the concentrations of these parameters for offices and public places to safeguard our health, classified into excellent and good classes according to EPT guidelines. Comparing outdoor and indoor air pollution, indoor exposure actually killed deaths in millions and outdoor much less. Rural developing countries are mostly affected with no or insufficient air conditioner and exhaust systems installed. Secondhand smoke, cooking, and burning of woods or coal are the main sources, and air pollutants trapped indoor could kill. 
I hope you find this video on air pollution health index and air pollution's impacts on human health useful in understanding some key concepts of how air pollution could kill and what policies we have in reducing air emission to safeguard our health. Bye-bye.